Data classes is a game-changing feature when it comes to writing object-oriented programs with Python. It will allow you to write classes faster than you expect. So in this video, we are going to explore a couple of reasons why you should get started with data classes right now. And we will also specify a couple of limitations that you should be aware of them because there are some limitations that data classes bring with it. So a lot to expect from that video. If you will enjoy it, please hit the like button and let's get started. The number one reason to use data classes, it allows us to write less code to reach the same result. Take a look in this example where we try to write a blog application. In this case, we will probably come up with a class like the following. We will have our init method and we will also assign some attributes to represent this post, like the owner that writes the post. So we came up with the user attribute and also in the rrepair method, we want to represent this object nicely. So that's why we came up with this string that we return. If we execute this application, you can see that the result is as expected. Now, if we take a look in the data class approach, how to write the exact same class, you can see a huge difference. So first of all, we import the data class from the data classes library, and then we use it as a decorator in the class. Now, the only thing that I need to do now is to design what attributes I want them to belong to the self object. And then I give them the type hint here, as you can see, and then I'm good to go. I will have the exact same result like we had before. So you can see that this is the same. So this means data classes takes automatically responsibility to assign those attributes that we define here to the self object. And in addition, it also takes care to design the REPR method so that it will be easier to read once we print those objects. So that is the number one reason that data classes are extremely useful and you should try them right now but before that let's explore the other advantages of data classes and what you can do with them number two reason that you want to use data classes and i really like it it allows immutability very very easily in a situation like you develop a blog application you probably do not want to change the owner of a post, right? Right after the post has been published because it doesn't make sense. But in that case, running a code like the following would work, right? If I was to execute my file, then you can see that I do not receive any errors and the result is really as expected. So if you want to avoid this, the only thing that you need to do is to go ahead to your data class decorator and put in here some arguments. If you would go ahead and say frozen equals to true, then basically you freeze the option of changing the values throughout your program. So once an instance has been created, like here in the seventh line, then after that you are not allowed to change any value. So if we were to execute this, then you can see that I receive frozen instance error. So this really means that I am not allowed to change any of the attributes of this class and that's something that we sometimes look for in classes like a post that represent posts of a blog. The next reason is the fact that it allows very very easily to create default values for instance attributes. Considering a situation that I also have likes attribute for each of my posts, then first things first, once a post is being published, it is probably going to have zero likes and that is the number that I want to start with. But you can see that it is complaining about how the likes is not provided here. So the only thing that I need to do now is to say that this one is going to be equal to zero and that's it. Basically now I have a default value for an instance attribute and it is much more easier to again going ahead and doing this inside the init method. If we take a look in our old file here, Doing the same thing would be something like the following. So I would need to go ahead and receive here likes. And only after that, I will need to go ahead and assign it to the self object. And only here I can say something like equals to zero. But again, this is just less effort, right? It only took me a couple of seconds. And in the other approach that is not a data class, it takes much more time. And we are talking about a difference of seconds but once you create tens of classes or more classes, once you create bigger projects, then this is a huge difference and 
And again, this is a good benefit creating default values in that way. Other reason that I really like to use data classes, although it takes responsibility to assign those things to init and include them in the RPR section, you still have full control to do what you really want to do with the attributes that you create. Let's simulate this with the following example. So thinking about more attributes that a blog post class would receive, obviously the post's content. Now pay attention that I created this attribute here above the likes because attributes that are having a default value should be in the latest position as possible. If I replace the positions, you can see that it is going to complain about it. So be sure to include the default value attributes in the latest position inside your classes. So now let's provide in the content. This is the first post welcome something like that now if i go ahead and execute my program you can see that this is the result now i might want to decide to not include the content in my object presentation because sometimes the content string length isn't going to be short as this one we might have posts with thousands of characters and that might be the reason you want to avoid using this one in your repr so you can go ahead and make that to be equal to a custom field and then take there some actions. So I'm importing this field from the data classes library and then I'm going to go ahead and say that it's equal to a field where I want to take in some changes. So I can easily go ahead and say that our EPR equals to false because we can understand that the default is true. Now I can just execute it and you can see the change here. So using the field here is going to allow you to exclude some of the default behaviors that data classes bring with it. The next thing that I really like but really like about data classes is the fact that you can force the users that are creating the instance to use keywords. Let's see why this is very very useful. Now let's say that we also add an expiry attribute to our blog post. Think of it like an Instagram story. So we go ahead and we say expiry is also an integer and let's say that it is equal to 24. Let's give a nice comment here presented by house. So it will be readable and understandable for the other code users. So now I can go ahead and basically say here 36. I want this for one and a half days. I want this for two days. Now. I am looking in this code right now, I cannot really understand what arguments are doing what. What is Jim, what is this one, and why do we have this number here? So you can force the users of this class to provide keywords. And in this case, it is going to be very useful because then you can understand what each attribute is about. So the only thing I need to do is to go to the decorator and say key w only equals to true. Now I'm okay with PyCharm throwing me an error about this because the interpreter is 3.9. Again, this is something that is only supported with Python 3.10, so I'm going to go ahead and execute this with Python 3.10. It's only going to be Python 3.1.0, and then the name of the file, and you can see that we see this exception. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure why we see this exception in that case, because this is usually the exception that you see when you provide more arguments than the expected, but maybe this is something that they need to fix here to throw more friendly exception because again, this is not what it means because this exception definitely looks familiar from regular instantiations where you just give more arguments than expected. So if we go ahead and say user equals to gym content equals to that one and expiry equals to this, then it is going to fix that cleaning everything and rerun it and you can see that it works as expected. Again, it's going to be very useful for readability once the instances are created. So those five reasons are great reasons why you should getting started with data classes right now. Now you should also be aware that there are more features that data classes come with it, but there are also some limitations that you should be aware of. For example, if we really think about an application that we need to maintain its posts, it is a great idea to implement it as a data class because as the world says, data class 
is used for maintaining data. So obviously, if we are going to have thousands of posts in the future in this blog application, it might be a great idea to use a data class for it. But you should also pay attention how the likes attribute is never going to be changed because we used frozen equals to true a couple of minutes ago. So for example, if I was to go ahead and say b1.likes plus equals one, because it totally makes sense that the likes amount will rise as the program goes, we cannot do that. So python new.py is going to fail because we cannot change the likes. So the number one limitation in data classes is the fact that you could only freeze the entire class or you could only not freeze the entire class. There is no option like, okay, make those three attributes read only or freeze them so-called and only likes should be the one that is allowed to override as the program goes. There is no such an option that is built in in data classes yet, but there is obviously some great ways that you can implement your own workarounds, maybe a counter that will check if those attributes are already changed once, or maybe just another way that could do the workaround for you, but sometimes writing those workarounds could be very expensive to you, meaning that it will take too much memory or it will cause a code duplication somehow. So this is the number one limitation that I can only say about data classes, but other than that, pretty amazing feature that you should go ahead and try right now. And obviously, if I want to make this program work, then I should go ahead and take this frozen equals to true and execute the program as it is. Now, be aware that using something like this also affects the encapsulation OOP principle. So besides using something like that, then I would extremely recommend using something like a method that will raise the likes. So I can go ahead and say def add like, and let's receive a number. And then this would go ahead and say self dot likes plus equals n. And then you could go ahead and let's say that you created there some more blog posts. So B2, B3, let's keep similar content, only maybe change the names here. And then you could go ahead and say basically B1 dot add like by one. You could do this for B2 as well. And then if we print those, so you can see the likes has been changed. If we also test this with B2, it is also going to work for us. So this is a great way implementing attribute changing because you never want to do this directly. Maybe in the future you would have some validations. So it is a great idea if you will have a method that will take responsibility to change the attribute values for you. So data classes has a lot more reasons that you should get started with it right now. And let me know in the comment section why you are going to start working with data classes right now. So much more to expect about data classes on this channel. We will discuss about how you can structure a project with data classes in the near future. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed in this one. Please be sure to hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you very soon.